Now that Britain has voted out, what's the plan? The week began with the attention on crisis talks in Berlin ahead of a Tuesday sit-down with the outgoing David Cameron in Brussels and a final decision by the remaining EU27 on Wednesday. Or not. Inside Europe, two schools of thought. There's the uh, cut-the-cord crowd. They want to nip uncertainty in the bud, thereby easing market jitters while signaling to others that EU membership can't be an open marriage. Then there are those who wonder whether no really means no. No to Europe or no to the establishment in general. They're rooting for a second referendum, although David Cameron has poured cold water on that idea already, or a snap general election. We're going to be asking what's best and about the turmoil here, there and everywhere across Europe. Today in the France Fanquette debate, we're looking at a messy divorce. And with us, French junior minister for digital affairs, Axel Le Maire, who's worked in London and uh, has represented uh, the French abroad in Britain as a socialist member of parliament in the past. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. I want to thank as well uh, Paris City Councilor Jean-Didier Berthaud uh, of the Les Républicains Party. Yes. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. And uh, from uh, Frankfurt, Klaus-Peter Wilsch, a CDU member of the German uh, Parliament. Thank you for joining us here in the France Van Get debate. I'm glad to be here. And you can weigh in on the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. They'll uh, be uh, sitting around a table for 28 on Tuesday in Brussels, but in Berlin there were just three. Matteo Renzi of Italy, François Hollande of France, and Angela Merkel of uh, Germany. Uh, what's interesting, uh, Klaus Bedovich, is we seem to have witnessed a little bit of a good cop, bad cop act. Uh, Merkel saying that uh, we need clarity over the next several months. Britain hasn't formally notified us. And we heard François Hollande saying uh, we shouldn't waste time. We need to limit what he called the irrational reactions from the markets. He wants Britain uh, to start the clock fast. So where do you stand? Well, first of all, it's just a, a referendum, a volunteer referendum um, that is not in, in legal terms binding uh, the government or the parliament. I'm quite sure they will follow uh, this um, a referendum. But uh, anyway, uh, of course, it's um, Britain's choice when they want to apply, when they want to set up their uh, well, exit vote uh, within the legal framework of Europe. I have the the feeling that uh, a lot of violating legal framework uh, is some of the reasons of the outcome of uh, the Brexit, which I really um, uh, regret. But you can't go against the will of the people. Here we had a referendum where there were 33 million votes cast, a one million vote margin. It's pretty conclusive. Yeah, of course it is. So I'm, I'm, I'm not. But but I think uh, what now, uh, especially. Um, uh, Juncker and Schulz uh, are bringing forward also Hollande. Uh, it's not the right way to uh, limit uh, damages coming from this decision. Uh, I really, uh, it's, in my in, in my eyes, it's really a pity that we are losing uh, well, kind of 18 percent of the national income of the European Union if they uh, really go out uh, and they they are, uh, want to do it, um, and that we are losing a country which is really devoted to well, um, free trade, uh, to market economy and um, stabili stability culture. And this is really a pity uh, also from, uh, not only from the European, but also from the German, German point of view. Axel Le Maire, uh, Klaus, Klaus Petrovich there, uh, alluding to remarks we heard from uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, the president of the European Commission, uh, stressing this was not an amicable divorce and that it should be quick. Uh, Klaus Peter saying this isn't the kind of talk we should be having at this time. This is not, well, no, that this is not a, a, rational, a rational approach in uh, exterior policies. Uh, uh, we're not uh, um, uh, uh, well, stressing our, our sentiments here. It's not the right a, way to go about it. Let me get, let me get, get yes. Axel Le Maire in on this. Yes. Well, I don't think it's yeah. just a referendum. I mean, it is a historic vote. It is the first time ever since the beginnings of the European Union that a country decides by vote uh, to leave uh, this uh, uh, legal construction. And that is over 17 million people who decided to leave. So even though I do regret very deeply and sincerely 
that result, uh, we have to listen to the people and, uh, and then organize the exit. And I think for economic uh, reasons, as well as for the message sent to uh, the people of Britain, but also to the rest of the Europeans, uh, this needs to be carried out pretty smoothly, but quickly. Do we uh, need, can we afford another three months of uncertainties, uh, not only on the markets, but for enterprises and for people who do not know what will happen. What was you, what was your reaction? Uh, well, we'll hear we'll hear first the the, the statement uh, by François Hollande uh, on this. He agrees, saying uh, the French president saying uh, that uh, well, uh, the British have to start the clock fast. As Angela just said, not wasting any time means ensuring that the British give us their notification as soon as possible. It means that there will not be any pre-negotiations before this notification, and once it has been handed in to the European institutions, only then will we enter into negotiations based off Article 50. Axel Le what was your reaction to the fact that both David Cameron, who is for Remain, and Boris Johnson, who was for leave, saying, let's not rush things, let's first decide what kind of relationship we'll want in the future with the EU before we start the clock. To be honest, I don't understand. I mean, they had months, not to say years, to reflect on that. They are the ones who organized that referendum. Uh, back in February, uh, the European Commission and the member states uh, decided to listen to uh, David Cameron's uh, demands and negotiated an agreement. And they also um, <coughs> decided not to intervene in the referendum debate and to let the people of Britain choose. Now that it's done, the Prime Minister decided to quit his job, so he leaves his country uh, without a, a, a political stability for months, and then basically says, well, let the next one decide. I'd, I think as a matter of responsibility, things just need to be put on the table, and we need to start discussing, negotiating, that doesn't mean necessarily find answers to more mornings, but at least Britain needs to tell the rest of the uh, European countries what they expect, what, what and we need you? to know. What does it tell you, the fact that they don't want to start it's, the clock? It looks from the outside that they don't know where they're going, and maybe also that they were not expecting that result. So why, why did they take the risk of organizing such a voting if if they were not prepared to face the results. Jean-Didier Berthaud, you agree? Excel. Uh, Sorry? Jean-Didier Berthaud, yes. do you agree? Yes, uh, I agree, but first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, I also deeply uh, regret uh, this decision because, uh, you know, we are a Erasmus generation, and I have the feeling that uh, another generation, an oldest generation, decided for a, a, youngest, uh, a younger generation. And so uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's deeply, it's deeply uh, regrettable. Uh, but um, I, I agree with uh, part of uh, what Axel Le Maire said, but uh, we, have, we have a problem, uh, which is a, a problem of leadership, a European leadership from several years, and the French leadership. And so, uh, why, why is it a problem of French leadership on this? No, 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 no. It's not. No, this not is too. But I, I think it's a part. Yes, like but that. I think it's a part. It's a part of the problem now. We have to to deal with, and not only in France, in a lot of countries, because we have to be responsible uh, for uh, for the next uh, for the next steps. Well, let me bring in Klaus Peter Vich on this. When you watch Angela yeah. Merkel. Matteo Renzi and François Hollande together in Berlin, do you have the feeling that uh, they, they have a plan, that they had a con contingency plan prepared, or are they improvising? I think they were, think, uh, they were really uh, expecting, like me, that it would um, be a, a result the other way around. Uh, maybe uh, a, a, close, uh, a close outcome, but uh, one in favor of. But now it has turned out to be the other way. This is um, the free will of um, the people of, of uh, Great Britain, of UK, 
and uh, it has of course to be respected but uh, if I may say to Excel um, this is of course uh, not a, a trivial situation uh, you know that Cameron was in favor of remain you know that a majority uh, in the uh, uh, in the parliament was uh, in favor of uh, remain and of course they have to well um, arrange things first. They have to look for uh, who will lead them uh, into this um, uh, into this bargaining process. And uh, I have a lot of um, well understanding for uh, the problems they have now. I think uh, we really should um, take the time because we need it too, as uh, the other 27. Uh, there were a lot of things uh, running wrong in, in, in Europe, from Nicosia to Belfast and from Helsinki to Seville. Um, people are fed up with this kind of, with this mess the EU is produce, producing. And um, if you look at uh, the process of um, the, the euro uh, zone uh, actions on the on the Greek um, um, uh, so all this had an impact but, uh, but, but Klaus Peter that, Vils, let me is, ask you because this is, this is all this is all this is all part of the story that people all part say, of the story well, but let me ask you because I saw that the there's, German there's, press there's, there's, was divided this morning. Uh, some editorials praising Angela Merkel for being cautious, uh, and others, like the Business Daily Handelsblatt, saying that, uh, uh, siding with Axel Le Maire, saying that, uh, you know, we have to put, get the British to start that clock fast. Of course, we have to. Uh, we will we will have to um, live with uh, this uh, outcome of of the polls uh, because we still have uh, a membership we have a partnership a, a really important partnership in nato uh, we will uh, also have uh, trade activities um, between both countries or with, between the eu and um, great britain and um, as i f figured out in the beginning of uh, of my um, statement this is 18 percent of uh, the european um, national uh, income uh, which is uh, really a lot uh, and of course we we cannot just uh, cut ropes uh, we have to find the new ways of cooperation mm -hmm. along this uh, the, the the British population is is willing to take with the majority Axel Le Maire, uh, f People don't always know this, but defense relations between France and Britain have never been closer. Mm -hmm. uh, the two work very closely together. In fact, you could even say the armed forces of both countries depend on each other. Is that relationship going to be untouched? And are things like, um, you know, that border that's at Calais, uh, is that going to remain? So two different questions there. Uh, regarding defense issues, it is true as uh, two countries sitting uh, permanently on the uh, uh, United Nations Council, uh, France and the UK, has decided to work very closely and they even produce um, uh, uh, military uh, defense materials together. Uh, so the cooperation has never been that strong. And I do not see how this could be reversed. And I think uh, as a matter of uh, European defense, uh, uh, geographically speaking, it is important to pursue that cooperation. But of course, it will be uh, for the defense ministers to have a common position on this question. Um, regarding immigration, I think uh, the question has to be addressed uh, at the European level, and Europe has to speak with one voice, probably amongst the most urgent things to put on the tables is the question of security and the question of migration. We know that immigration did play a very big role uh, uh, during the referendum. Um, for good or bad reasons, people are worried, they're concerned, and we need to address uh, uh, that uh, question, which is why when I say that we need to put all the questions on the table. This is to respect the people's vote, to respect the young people also who are uh, very depressed uh, by the fact that 75% of the 18 to 24 year old voted in favor of remaining uh, within Europe. And now they see that their country um, uh, departs from what they considered to be their natural family. But we have to talk to them and tell them very quickly how the future cooperations will, will, will look like. I'll give you another very concrete example. I started a task force between France and Britain on data, 
on the data economy, on the society of data. How will we share our data? How will we build new economic value and jobs out of that new economy? Well, I ask myself the question, will I carry on? What will happen? And I think the best message I can send to the British people, whoever they are, is to keep going. So I think France wants to be constructive. We have to look ahead. But in order to do that, we just need to put the questions on the table. It's a tough one, isn't it, uh, uh, Jean Didier Berthaud? Because on the one hand, you uh, you don't want to reward Britain for for for, for this uh, if you're fr from French perspective. But on the other, uh, it, it, is it the best thing to do, as Axel Le Maire says, to continue with her data project? It's it's probably uh, not. It's it's one way. It's one way. But uh, I'm I'm not a member of this government, so mm. I'm a little bit free to. <laughs> to but you keep the I, close I think, ties. You it, keep the close ties. Yes, but I, I think we have a message to to give to uh, uh, UK uh, leaders now. This is stop playing with European institutions. Say so it's very important to have mm. a clear uh, a clear way now to build something strong between us. So uh, I, I respect this vote. And I think for most of people, most of UK people, most of British people now, it, it's like, it's, it's like uh, when you drink uh, too much in a pub uh, one evening and uh, the day after is very hard, you know? It's a hangover. Uh, yes. Uh, terrible, gonna, terrible headache, I think. We're going to pick up on that point because we have to yeah. take a very quick break. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.